Welcome back to Acer P Bonsai. We're here with my Oridono Nishiki forest that we created in one of my earliest episodes in late winter, early spring before the leaves pushed. And it was a collection of the mother tree as well as four additional air layers that I had taken off of this mother tree over the course of the last few years. Since the last update, unfortunately, one of the air layers did die. So I'm gonna reach my hand through. It was positioned up here toward the front. I don't know if I just over pruned the roots. Sometimes it happens. Trees are gonna die on us and we've gotta be ready to adapt and overcome. We are currently sitting at that unlucky number four and we're gonna to need to increase the number of trees in this composition. The good news is that we have four or five Oridono Nishiki cuttings already rooting out really well in the aeroponic propagator downstairs. So I'm really excited about getting those fully developed and we can add to this forest and really thicken it up, add a lot more character to the composition. There are a few long leaders up here on the top that are off. This is a second flush of growth you can see coming out right here. But let's go ahead and do a turn so you all can see the tree from all angles. Got this real small one down here, another one in the back. This one was a triple trunk, if you can see over here. The central leader of that actually looks like it has died. All of these leaves have curled up. That's okay if it just ends up being a double trunk. This one over here is a triple trunk. Kind of interesting. We've got a triple trunk, double trunk, single trunk, and then we have our main tree. So let's keep spinning that around so you guys can see. And you might notice that this central tree, the mother tree, has grown quite a bit more vigorously than the air layers. This is going to be a combination of one, it's a larger tree, and two, being on that straight Acer palmatum rootstock probably gives this one a slightly higher amount of vigor. And we'll continue to monitor that as we develop the tree. Or you can see we've got a few really nice second flushes of growth already starting. When we start seeing these second pushes of growth, that's a really good indication that it's time to do our early summer work on this tree. We're in that kind of early to middle development phase. So we're not doing anything too crazy on this tree. There's a long nub right here under my thumb. We need to cut that back and heal that wound. I don't know if you can see it, but also further back behind that, there's a really big nub down here on this longer branch that we're gonna have to cut back and heal. Those have compartmentalized really well. Uh, they've died back and you can see that the wood has browned out. That tells us it's time to do those major chops. In the Northern Hemisphere, anytime during the month of June, is that perfect time to do the major chops and surgeries on your Japanese maples. Today is the 20th of June, and so we are going to perform some of those major surgeries. We're gonna also trim back some of these overgrown branches. We are not gonna defoliate this tree, and we're gonna just monitor as those wounds start to heal. We may do a late summer defoliation toward the end of August, but it's too soon to tell on that. We're just gonna do a little bit of pruning. We're gonna bring everything back to one or two nodes of extension. Once we trim it back and take a look at the structure, we may make a few other additional decisions on that. As far as the lower trees, these three air layer trees, they're fairly weak. We're gonna do very minor pruning on those trees today just to bring them into shape, but we don't really wanna slow them down. We're trying to strengthen these trees up and get them in a better balance with the strength and vigor of the central mother tree. All right, so without any further ado, let's get started. I'm just gonna begin over here on this side of the tree. We've already taken plenty of rooted cuttings off this tree, so we're not super worried about saving anything. You may also notice that there's a little bit of browning on these leaves. They got some scorch in the hot afternoon sun. I do have these trees up against the west tree line of my property, so anything after noon, about 11.30 to 12 o'clock, these trees go into full shade. Um, I'm not sure if I missed a uh, thorough watering on a day or if it was just the heat of the sun, what, what caused that scorching. It's common in Japanese maples to get burned like that in midsummer. Probably should have moved this tree into shade when we started getting into the high 80s. In any case, I'm not super worried about it. The aesthetic damage is not really pretty, but it actually does serve a positive function in the sense of it is going to encourage buds to develop at the base of those older leaves. And it will encourage a more robust second flush of growth if we do that late summer defoliation. These are really vigorous. So we're gonna bring these all back to one node. And some of these, even bringing them back to one node, they may end up being too long and strong to ever be used in this design. For example, this one here that you're seeing here in the front, this little shoot here is almost two inches long. So we may eventually remove it from the design, but for now we're just gonna bring it back to one node. You can see on this side, we've already started to bring the leaves in toward a more reasonable canopy. And we're just gonna continue around the tree like that. 
We've got multiple shoots coming out from one node. We've got this set up to be the new leader on the tree. I'm gonna leave this shoot long. We're gonna need to transition the taper from this trunk line up to this. So this is gonna need to thicken up quite a bit more. We'll leave that one in place. This back branch, we are going to prune that back. I may wire this out and develop this into a, another branch. I just got a really crazy idea. So bear with me here. If you look here, we have this trunk line here and we have a fairly nice transition through the center here into this trunk line. It's got interesting movement. This trunk line over here is really quite straight and it seems to me that it's a bit out of proportion, particularly this main area through here it's just a really long section. And I'm thinking we might be able to create a more powerful impression on this central tree if we completely reduce this branch off and develop this into our new leader. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I wanna do. And so for now, I'm gonna wait on that. We might air layer this off next year, but for now, what I wanna do is heal this major wound. We're gonna do that first before we make any decisions. All right, let's move around to the side of the tree here. Back, okay, let's come around here. You can see these are coming out really far. When we prune all these back to one node, what we're trying to do is encourage the tree to increase the number of branches, and that's, we call that ramification in the art of bonsai. So as we increase that ramification, the energy that this tree has is going to be distributed across more and more branches. As we distribute the energy across more and more branches, we're gonna have smaller units of energy in each of the branches, which means they're gonna grow a little bit slower, a little bit smaller, and generally that will also cause those leaves to grow a bit smaller. The other way we can shorten those nodes and reduce the leaf size is with a smaller root mass. And I believe that's what you're seeing down here in these air layers. Because they have recently developed new roots, they don't have that robust root system. Uh, they don't have a strong push of water and nutrients up through the stems, and that's causing them to grow a little bit more sluggishly. These are really long, but they're actually only one node each. So we may need to push that back even more. <coughs> this one is fairly well healed. So I do want to slow this down, and I am going to in addition to encouraging extra ramification, by thinning all of this out, we've really opened up a lot more light to the lower areas of this composition. We're gonna leave this one branch here. Let me bring that back to the front here. We have these bright pink shoots coming out right here, and those are really long as well. They're probably not gonna be useful in the design. We have another shoot down here that's a lot more modest. That one looks okay. I'm gonna pinch this shoot here. Stop that elongation. This one, I'm going to allow it to run. It's already too long to be usable, so I'm just gonna allow that to continue running and gain strength. I'm gonna cut this little nub back as well, but I'm gonna reduce that all the way back. The air layer here has got a strong one here, strong one here, growing well, but this central one is really not doing very good. If you look really close down here, you can see there's kind of this greenish vein here on the right-hand side. And then you can see that black area on the left. That black area is where it's died back completely on this left side. There still seems to be a slight amount of live vein on the back side here, but at this point, it's so damaged, I think what I'd like to do is just completely remove this stump and we'll continue to develop this trunk and this trunk. That branch is dead. My hands are still really sore. The other day, I had a new neighbor chop down two beautiful Japanese maples in their yard. And I went into freak out mode and I went over and I kindly asked if I could try to rescue them. I ended up digging up these two massive Japanese maple stumps and my hands are still really bruised up. But uh, it took me about an hour on the first one, which was a little smaller, and then probably over two hours on the second stump. I had a shovel, a pickaxe, and a reciprocating saw. That was a serious, serious stump. Hold on to this trunk a little bit, try to keep it from moving. I definitely don't want to see that necrotic tissue spreading. I think my concave cutters are going to work a little bit better in this area. All right, so we're going to come in with our new razor blade. 
trying to get rid of any necrotic tissue remaining so that we can begin the healing process. And so we've pretty successfully removed all of that necrotic tissue. We want to make sure we have that well sealed to prevent any additional water intrusion into that wound. I think we'll be okay though now that we've got that heat cleaned out. This little tree seems to have compartmentalized pretty well there at the base of that stump. And we're going to do the same thing on this lower stump here. Get right down in there. That one's looking good. Now we've got this all patched up. Let's come around to the other side and assess this triple trunk here. We can start here with this little nub. Nice clean cut there. It shattered a little bit on the bottom side where we had a little bit of die back. Cut in there with a nice clean razor blade. Find our live cambium. There we go. And I can see xylem all the way around the perimeter. Although it's thin, we can see that there's full growth happening on both sides now. Let's cover that up with cut putty. All right, let's see where else we need to do some work. When you're making these cuts on small branches, it's a good practice to put a finger behind the area you're cutting so you can provide a little bit of pressure. You're usually, you're pressing your tool against the branch to get a nice solid contact with the blade. So this finger on the backside allows you to get a nice solid grip on it. Okay, we've got most of that dead tissue out. So we wanna go in there with a razor blade to do the detail work. So the good side of waiting is that you allow the tree to fully compartmentalize before doing additional carving work. The downside is when that dead wood is allowed to sit for any period of time, it does dry out and harden. It makes it much more difficult to cut. So having a really nice sharp blade is super important. All right, that's good there. Make sure we cover the entire perimeter of that wound. Let's get this old putty off of there. It hasn't really done a whole lot here, so let's see if we can open that up, stimulate it to start up that callousing process again. We want to be able to see that green cambium all the way around the perimeter of the cut. There we go, that's good. We've got green all the way around. This is a really difficult one here because we've got a tiny little branch coming out the back. You can see we can kind of chip away at it, taking the little triangles out. Don't want to damage this little branch. And you can't see it on camera, but I've got a little bit of cambium tissue exposed here. Let's get that covered over with a little bit of cut putty. I want to exclude that water from the wound so it can heal without getting any rot. Big old chop. Take a little wedge cut out of this. It'll help create the illusion that this was two independent branches. See what I did there? Created a little wedge here. And, you know, there's a possibility we could kill this branch, but if we don't do this work now, it's going to be a lot of inverse taper and this branch will not be usable. Now the moment we've all been waiting for, the giant. We're going to do this in sections. Oh, that's hard. Change angles. Goodness gracious. Ah, there we go. Oh, that's a huge one. Look at that fatty. So far this is all dead. We just hit a little bit of live cambium. All the way off. All right, and that last chop, we just removed the very last bit of dead tissue. You can see that dark brown right there above my cutters and it doesn't go through. So now we're in clean wood. As you can see, this live tissue is, all right, and we've got that nice and clean all the way around the circumference. Now that we're back out to a wide shot, you can see that this trunk line here is very straight and there's no taper. But for now, we're gonna continue developing this. We're gonna try to heal over this wound and see how it looks. When we're in this zoomed out, view, we really assess the structure of the tree and take into account the proportions of our design. 
Currently, this apex over here is jutting way out to that side. For now, I'm okay with it. I think it's okay to have a really nice directional flow to the design. You wanna make sure that these lower trees have time to develop. So what I'm actually gonna do here, because these are growing so strong, is I'm gonna actually reduce these back. And that may cause another flush of growth, and that's okay, but I wanna give the rest of the tree a chance to catch up. We're gonna have to be really aggressive with the apex of this mother tree because it is so strong. Don't worry too much about it. It will spring back and it's gonna respond really well to this work. All right, this one's nice and short, so we're gonna leave that. These ones are fairly decent in size. They're not overly long, so we're gonna allow those for now. We're also going to do a little bit of leaf cutting on the top. These ones are burned, so I'm gonna leave those for now. Some of these other ones, I'm gonna reduce them down a little bit. So we're gonna do a little bit of Hagiri on these just to reduce their strength. And it doesn't have to be pretty. You can see I'm irregularly cutting these, I'm removing the burned parts. But what we're really doing here is opening up the tree so that more light gets to the interior. And that's gonna encourage interior budding. We may end up defoliating this tree later on in the season. So we're just about to the end of our first defoliation period here in June. We're almost to the end of June. It's like the 21st of June today. Um, but we'll have another opportunity to defoliate at the end of August or early September. Because this is such a vigorous tree, we may end up doing that, but I'm just gonna Trim some of these back, allow a little more air and light into the interior. And we'll keep an eye on this tree through the rest of summer here. And reducing back some of these leaves. So we get more air, more light into the interior of the tree. This is not going to hurt the tree at all. So you may also have been thinking to yourself, well, you didn't do a partial defoliation by reducing one leaf from every node here, which is Haskashi. Instead, you're going straight to Hagiri. And that's okay too. You don't actually have to do the one leaf full removal before doing Hagiri. You can go straight to Hagiri and that will create a more uniform canopy in some cases. All right, this one has actually got an extra extension. Let's cut that back and reduce those. And there's no set way, like this one here, I left with three lobes on it. It's a medium sized leaf. All right. And that's gonna give a little more light to these interior guys. And doing this is gonna slightly weaken the central tree it's going to give a lot more light to those smaller air layers in the lower canopy of this composition. Reducing some of these back. Let's see how large some of these leaves got. It's just insane how strong this Central tree is growing. A couple of these really damaged leaves. Just remove those all together. Really reduce the density through the upper canopy. You can see the lower areas of this composition quite a bit better. So you can see there's gonna be a lot more light getting down here to this lower tree. But we don't want this to run too long. So now that we've got it reduced back, we should go ahead and push these back just a bit. We're not gonna reduce the leaf size on any of these. 
but we did want to kind of control that canopy there. So pushing this one back also allowed a little bit more light to this very lowest one. We're not going to do any pruning on this. It's probably one of the weakest trees in the composition, but this definitely looks a lot more balanced. This sub trunk here is creating a nice little pad. And as you can see, it's, it's essentially the canopy of this trunk, but in the overall forest composition, each of these little trees can become a pad of that larger tree that we call a forest. So that's really interesting too, how that comes together design-wise. Over on this back side, we've got quite a bit of leaf burn here. So I'm not really trying to do any leaf reduction, but on some of these more heavily damaged tips, I'm gonna go ahead and clean those up. Try to leave as many of these as we can. So let's push this back slightly, removing only a few nodes off just the strongest of the branches here. All right, this area here is a little bit shaded, so I'm gonna do just a very, very small amount of leaf burning here. Create some additional light down there to that bottom area. We wanna make sure that that continues to gain strength. We're really opening up the light really well to this lower branch. Let's look at that from the side. So we've got quite a bit of strength back here. We have four shoots coming from the same node. Possibly in the fall, we'll do a little bit of branch selection on this apex here. We see the same thing going on over here on the side. And although we really enjoy these pink shoots, we're gonna to need to reduce this back and slow that down. Pushing these ones at the apex back to one node each. And there you go, we've got a nice little canopy started there. These ones in the back side, these are very weak and they've been under this canopy all spring. So we're not gonna do any pruning on this section here. All right, folks, so I just want to do a quick update, bring you guys on to show you a little bit of this early summer work, controlling the overall density of the leaves in the canopy. We want to make sure that we're allowing all these trees to have access to light and resources. And we're going to let these grow through the summer. We're going to put this into a much shadier location that it's been in in the past. We've got several Oridona nishkis in the aeroponic propagator. So I'm excited to get a few of those out and growing so we can fill in this space over here on the right-hand side. There's probably also some room in this back corner to add a few additional trees. Really satisfied with the progress we've made through spring. This is shaping up to be a very nice little composition. So thanks for joining me on this episode of ACRP Bonsai. Hop into the comments and let me know what you think and just let me know what's going on with your Acers and your Japanese maple garden. I'd love to hear about it.